No. No, we must wait until the war is over. But the war might go on forever. No. No, no. The British will set us free one day. It may take years, but they will come. Hello? <laughs> Yes, but it will take more than two before I tell the wife. Uh, are you expecting us by any chance? What does he say? I don't know. I don't speak English. Neither do I. We wish to talk to Monsieur René. Ah, René. Ah, ah, uh, uh, we, we British uh, come from the sky, uh, shot down. Um, <laughs> Two days too soon. You are two days too soon. <laughs> What's he saying? I don't know. Never understood the word of the language. <laughs> you huh? are two days too soon. Too soon. Huh? What's he going on about? I think he wants your watch before he lets us in. <laughs> oh, surely not. Too soon. Huh? Yeah, well, you better give it to him. We can't stand out here forever. Grasping French twit. <laughs> he left us absolutely stranded at Dunkirk, you know. We have to give him a watch to get us through the window. God knows what he'll want before we get food. Now. <laughs> Why has he given me his watch? Maybe the British are grateful because we fought the Germans while they ran away at Dunkirk. <laughs> you had best keep it. They might be offended. Thank you. <laughs> He's pocketing the damn thing. What's that, tell you? I don't want them here. This place is crawling with Germans. Uh, 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 well, what am I going to do with them? We must hide them until we can talk to Michelle. Hide them? She says, where am I going to hide them? What are they talking about? I don't know. Perhaps they think of some way to get your watch. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm damn peckish. <laughs> Me, hungry. <laughs> No, no! What's wrong with him? I think he has the toothache. But he's taking them to a dentist. No, no. Uh, ah, 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 no dentist. That's definite enough. No food. Those who wanted the watch. Here you are, you mercenary frog. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no! Perhaps we're getting sardines. <laughs> uh, uh, how can I make them understand we have to hide them? Uh, uh. Leave it to me. Thinks he wants me to go behind the curtains with her. <laughs> In that case, what are those for? Maybe she's got a sticky catch on her bra. <laughs> that senior officer, I think I should go first. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. <laughs> Maria, Yvette, take these worthless parcels and put them in the cellar. Oh, my God, the British Airmen are here already. <laughs> Jack, Pierre, my old friends, wine on the house for my old friends, Jack and Pierre, the onion sellers. <laughs> no, very kind, monsieur, but my name is Claude. This is Alex. This is our first visit here. But in that case, you can pay for your own wine. <laughs> but where did they go? They went down the cellar to make sure it was not too damp for the reclining Madonna with the big boobies. <laughs> You better brush up on the Marseillaise. I say, Charles, I've news for you. Two more British airmen are coming here very soon. Oh, good show. What are their names? Do we know them? She's gone. They don't hang about, do they? <laughs> I say, that's a jolly good disguise. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Did you get the togs? Did you clobber a couple of jennies? <laughs> Monsieur René, what are these Englishmen doing here? René, Ojo Fleet from the Gestapo is upstairs. What? How oh, very convenient. You know, I've got a nasty feeling he's not one of us. <laughs> are we escaping British prisoners, hmm? When I tell the Gestapo what I have found, I will get a medal for this. <laughs> and what about the picture? I would say you stole it and concealed it. Ah, but Colonel, the Gestapo will take the picture back to Berlin and then goes your pension. I think Rennie has a very good point there, Colonel. <laughs> Keep some quiet. I will deal with the Gestapo. <laughs> Have you found the treasure? We have just searched the cellar. Not a smell of it. Continue to look. I shall not return to Berlin until the picture is found. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Gilles, Pierre, Jacques, Emile, my old friends, come in. <laughs> sit down, sit down. Wine on the house for my old friends, Pierre, Emile, and Jacques, and Gilles. <laughs> Suddenly, in this town, many onion sellers. It is a festival, Herr Flick. <laughs> Every year, they gather in the town to examine each other's onions. <laughs> they do the dance of the onions. <laughs> and at midnight, they have the feast of the onions. <laughs> and they just eat and eat all the onions. <laughs> Sounds very strange to me. By three o'clock in the morning, it sounds unbelievable. Until <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow, Colonel. Al Hitler. Al Hitler. Al Hitler. Why not? <laughs> Monsieur René, I have just saved your life. I am eternally grateful, Colonel. And from now on, I give the orders, and you will listen to every word very carefully and obey every detail. Anything you say, Colonel. Yvette will be in room six in one hour with the vet, celery, and the flying helmet. <laughs> and the feather duster? Two. <laughs> what about the egg whisk? No egg whisk, Renee. The electric mixer with two screws. The colonel will see you now. <laughs> oh, Colonel, what an honor it is to be received in, in your wonderful commandeered office. <laughs> I have taken the liberty of bringing a few simple, worthless gifts for you. A bottle of Chateau Lafitte 37. And some rather good cigars, which I was keeping until after the war was over, but as you were doing so well, I thought you might as well have them now. <laughs> some cheese, a little cognac, uh, Napoleon, of course, and a small bottle of perfume for your assistant. Thank you very much, but I don't wear it. <laughs> Not you. This assistant, this beautiful young lady, this fine example of German womanhood. Oh, thank you. Now, what can I do for you, Colonel? We just want you to answer a few questions. Will there be anything else, Colonel? <clears throat> Will there be anything else, Hans? Uh, yes, Colonel. We shall require a pair of pliers and some rubber hose. Oh, no, not the pliers and the rubber hose. <laughs> no, I will tell you everything I know. It is so we can get the gas poker working. <laughs> not the gas poker! <laughs> I will tell you everything I don't know. Sit it down, down <laughs> René. We have a serious problem. Yes, well, I don't think it's as serious as my problem. <laughs> we know you have been hiding British airmen and helping them to escape. Well, I know you know that, Colonel, but may I remind you that on your behalf, I am also hiding a valuable old painting which you hope to sell after the war. One or? <laughs> Not to mention a priceless cuckoo clock. Two one? <laughs> no, Hans, no score. Because we're going to hand that painting to the Gestapo. And then they will leave us in peace. Because we will hand you over as well. Oh, but, Colonel, that painting was to be your pension after the war. With it, you could have bought your own little Berthes garden in the mountains. <laughs> if you hand it over, you will have nothing. And if you hand me over, well, 
Well, the cafe will not be the same without jolly, jovial, generous Rene. <laughs> the life and soul of any party. <laughs> it is very sad, Rene. There is no other course open to us. But we've enjoyed your hospitality. Yes, I had noticed. <laughs> we've always regarded you as a friend. Well, I, I look upon you in the same way, Colonel, and the captain, and the young lady out there with the big... We all think of her as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing in the world we want is for you to suffer at the hands of the Gestapo. Well, you are most considerate, Colonel. So, I am going to give you this ring. Inside is a pill. Flush <laughs> it between your teeth. And in one and a half seconds, you shall be like a dead beetle. <laughs> I don't think I shall ever forget your kindness, Colonel. <laughs> Perhaps René would like to give his wife one. Even a Frenchman cannot think of that sort of thing at a time like this. <laughs> Here, take it. <clears throat> Colonel, a, a little idea is running around in my brain. How would it be if we let the Gestapo find a copy of the painting? You have a copy of the painting? No, no, but perhaps one could be made by... Uh, well, let us say, a forger. You know a forger? Well, in my business, you meet all sorts. Mind you, he would want paying. How much? Well, money means so very little in these hard times, but perhaps a bottle of Chateau Lafitte 37 and some cigars and a little cognac. What about the cheese? You may keep the cheese. We could use it to stuff in our ears when his wife sings in the cafe. <laughs> Actually asking us to lend you our uniforms? Colonel, believe me, it is the only way to get the picture to England to have it copied. But, Colonel, if the Gestapo ever found out that we have been helping British airmen to escape, do you not think that they would be cross? <laughs> <laughs> if they find out about the stolen painting, they will be cross. Look! Look. You will be upstairs with the girls and your uniforms will be quietly stolen. After a brief but very enjoyable interval, they will be returned to you. <laughs> now, what do you say, Colonel? Look, the girls are waiting. <laughs> <laughs> will there be time for the flying helmet and the wet celery? <laughs> Just. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> what about you, Hans? Well, I, I am thinking about my little wife in Berlin. Uh, what about Maria and the egg whisk? <laughs> <laughs> I am the... Oh. I am <laughs> I'm thinking that Berlin is a very long way away. And, uh, my wife is about the same size as Maria, uh, height-wise. <laughs> it is all fixed. But don't forget the boots. Boots? I shall say stuff for boots. <laughs> Their boots. <laughs> Get out of your talks, chaps. Uniforms will be here any second. Hey, good show. What is happening? They are taking off their clothes, ready for their disguise. They must not remove their trousers in front of my mother. <laughs> it is war, I understand. <laughs> I say, look at the crumpets. <laughs> Get cracking, chaps. Do you think we've got time? <laughs> the clothes. <laughs> French people, you have some very nice jewellery. Thank you. I have a trinket that is much admired. Really? <laughs> Can I show it to you? If you must, yes. <laughs> ah, yes. It has a picture inside. Oh. Look. Oh, yes, what... What lovely long blonde hair. Yes, isn't it? Unfortunately, he had to have it cut off when he joined the army. <laughs> Are they ready? 
Well, they are dressed, but they are not very realistic. <sighs> Forgotten the painting. The what? The fallen Madonna with the big boobies. I say, chaps, you've forgotten the picture. No, we haven't. We took it out of the frame. Where is it now? <laughs> <laughs> For heaven's sake, try to look more German. Right there. <laughs> Good night, gentlemen. Come again soon. Uh, give my love to the Führer. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> you see, I have to be nice to the Germans. They are my customers. They are winning the war. So if I am not nice to them, they will shoot me. I have to be nice to the resistance. Otherwise, they will shoot him for being nice to the Germans. <laughs> I have to be nice to my wife because if she finds out I'm having an affair with Yvette, she will shoot me. <laughs> and if Yvette finds out I'm having an affair with Maria, well, she will shoot me. <laughs> now, Otto Flick, the Gestapo officer, is having dinner in the back room. Upstairs are two German officers in their underwear because I have borrowed their uniforms to help two British airmen to escape. The pianist over there is in fact a forger for the Marquis. And the German officer at that table fancies me. <laughs> and it is only Tuesday. Really? The Colonel is getting very impatient. You promised he would have his uniform back in 15 minutes. It is now 45. I take his mind off it. Keep him amused. How can I look at my celery? <laughs> but, Maria, can't you entertain him? How can I? My celery isn't even good enough for soup. <laughs> Herr Flick of the Gestapo is paying his bill. Ready? Herr Flick says he's going to search the building. What? He will find the painting of the fallen Madonna by Van Klomp in the cellar. No, no, the painting has gone. But so too are the uniforms of the Colonel and your Captain. If they find the Colonel and the Captain in their underwear, this could make the Gestapo suspicious. Oh. <laughs> Elga, you must keep Erflick amused. Amusing the Gestapo is a very serious business. Well, surely you can think of something? I have it. Give me a large glass of your strongest brandy. Of course, at once. We must find the German officers quickly. Take them to the room of my mother. Yeah, Maria, go and tell the officers. I will explain to the old girl. It is. Can nobody hear me? Shut up, you old bat. This place is, is crawling with the Gestapo. I shall tell them nothing. Now, listen carefully to what I have to say. Two German officers are coming to your room. Pigs! <laughs> I will fight them to my dying breast. <laughs> they taken off their uniforms. Have you no finesse? They will not touch you, Mama. <laughs> that is what they said in 1917. <laughs> Get in the wardrobe. If I do not have my uniform in ten minutes, you will be shot. But, Colonel, your revolver is on the belt of the uniform, which is around the waist of the British Airman, who is not here. <laughs> Get in the hall. I do it. René, he is searching the restaurant, and then he is on his way up here. Who is? Otto Flick of the Gestapo. Gestapo? <laughs> Not a word. The Gestapo are coming. If they find the Germans in the wardrobe, I could be shot. I shall not yield to the torture of the Gestapo. Long live France! <laughs> shut up! <laughs> hey, Otto Flick! Good evening. Good evening, Herr I am sorry to put you to inconvenience, but there are certain things I need to know. There are two German officers in the wardrobe of the radio is under my bed. <laughs> you know, Colonel, it is quite pleasant to be a French onion seller. People smile at us. Mm. 
Especially that German officer over there. Right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I prefer, I think I prefer being a peasant to being a German. You'll be a dead peasant. Herr Flick finds out we've been helping British airmen to escape. I have good news, Colonel. London is making your uniforms. They are working through the night and they will be dropped by parachute at dawn tomorrow. But how do we know they will fit? Well, they are being made by the very best Savile Row tailors. Solomon and Klein. <laughs> Jewish tailors? <laughs> are you mad? <laughs> they are the best here, Colony. That's not the point, Hans. It's the principle of the thing. If I'd known they were employing Jewish tailors, things would have been different. We could have ordered some extra shirts. <laughs> <laughs> the lunch will soon be ready. Ah, what is it? You filled the fish and bagels? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a surprise. How much longer do we have to wait? Should I sing a song to help pass the time? No! Go <laughs> back to the kitchen. <laughs> Oh, my God, more onion sellers. <laughs> Colonel, it is I, Helga. Why are you dressed as an onion seller? Her flick will be suspicious. He is also disguised as an onion seller. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Herr Patron. <laughs> I am just a simple onion seller in search of fine and food. Sit. Yes, Herr Onion Seller. I will obtain wine and food at once. Monsieur René. Huh? That Onion Seller there, is he another cousin? Oh, very distant, yeah. I'm beginning to recognize your cousins. <laughs> <laughs> They're all very well built. Here it is. A work of art. Casserole of pigeon. <laughs> It looks very appetizing. <laughs> Will you join us? I shall be most honored. Uh, breast or leg? I like the legs. I can vouch for the truth of this. <laughs> Where did you get pigeon? They were in a basket in the kitchen. <laughs> you fool! They were carrier pigeons. No. Yes. No. Don't start. Look. <laughs> There on the leg is a cylinder. It contains the measurements of the kernel. There is a cylinder attached to the leg of this casserole kitchen. Uh, 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 spices have... Uh, uh, they should have been removed. Allow me. Stop! I will investigate. Inside the cylinder, covered in gravy, there is a piece of paper with writing on it. Well, perhaps it is the recipe. <laughs> or, 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 or maybe even the, the name and address of the pigeon. <laughs> Clearly, it is in code. This will go at once to Berlin to be deciphered by experts. Congratulations, Herr Colonel. Already, these disguises are producing results. <laughs> Now, listen very carefully. I shall see this only once. <laughs> you are to take this container. I see. And what does this container contain? Balls. <laughs> Michelle, up until now, our relationship has been on a very civilized and friendly basis. <laughs> If I had ever said anything to offend you, Balls, I... Jean. Oh. <laughs> this type of jean is colored a very pale blue. Well, I run a bar. I do know that. <laughs> Natural glycerin is also colored a very pale blue. Oh, I didn't know that. But what is the connection? This is nitroglycerin. Ah. <laughs> very gentle with it. Do not drop it. Do not let anyone see it. Add it in your cellar. At 11 o'clock, there is going to be a big bang. <laughs> That was not definite. It was only a loose <laughs> What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I am asking you to add this bottle in your cellar. It is to blow up the railway line. But the railway line does not run over my cellar. <laughs> my restaurant runs over my cellar. I know that. I will be back to collect it quite soon. Well, in that case, why don't you just keep it? Because if the Germans find it, they will shoot me. Well, if they find it here, won't they shoot me? You have a cafe. You have a bar. Why should you not have a bottle of Bull's gin? 
If I could think of a reason, I would give you one. <laughs> so here we go, the same refrain, the final encore. You are my love, my only love, once more. You are my love, my only love, once more. <laughs> well, thank you for your kind applause. Now, any requests? Two beers and some more cheese. <laughs> ah, what would you like, Lieutenant? Well, I have a fancy for something a little different. What do you suggest? Maybe a small pot and lemon? Definitely, <laughs> very nicely. There is Monsieur René. I have been uh, trying to catch his eye all night, but I think he is avoiding me. He has a lot on his mind at the moment, but I'm sure he is not trying to avoid you. He's too busy trying to avoid his wife. <laughs> that is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Monsieur René. Ah, Lieutenant, uh, have you got a drink? I was asking for something a little different. What is that you have there? Oh, it's, it's, it's just a, a very exotic gin. Ah, it is new to me. What is it? Uh, balls. <laughs> Monsieur René, so far our relationship has been on a civilized and friendly basis. I don't in any way. No, no, no. B-O-L-S. Balls. Oh, oh, so sorry. <laughs> it is most intriguing. I will try some. Oh, no, no, no. I cannot open the bottle just for one gin. Well, make it two balls. <laughs> you have one also. No, even for two, I cannot open it. Well, uh, perhaps she would like one as well. Yes, I would love one. You do not drink on duty. Since when? Well, since now. Perhaps you would like to give your wife one. <laughs> Out of the question. Well, well, I will buy the whole bottle. It's not for sale. Are you trying to get rid of me? <laughs> Not deliberately, no. <laughs> Monsieur Leclerc! Take this gin to my mother. Uh, gin? Well, uh, I have forgotten how it smells. So long have I been in the nick. Maria! Take this and mix it with the corn for the chickens. It will help them to lay. <laughs> yes, Colonel. Vinny, sit down. Oh, thank you, Colonel. <clears throat> now, listen, Vinny. I will come straight to the point. If you do not get these uniforms by tonight, you will be shot. You don't beat about the bush, do you, Colonel? <laughs> I do not. No, why don't you try it sometime? It's better for the nerves, especially my nerves. <laughs> well. Do we get them or not? Colonel, they are coming from London. London? Helga, the less you know, the better. Put some cheese in your ears. <laughs> I'm afraid there was a slight delay, Colonel. The tailor had to go to a bar mitzvah. A Jewish tailor? <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> I will speak to, Mich to, to someone who will uh, make contact. They will try to get them delivered to us tonight. Your life depends on it. So do our little toes. <laughs> Come on, little chickens. Come on. It's dinner time. It is time I am singing again. I need something to steady my nerves. You know, singing to a crowded room takes a special kind of courage. It's lucky you are so brave. <laughs> what are you doing with that bottle? Yeah, I'm just going to wet my whistle. You fool! This could blow your whistle through the top of your head. <laughs> what are you saying? I am saying it is to blow up a train. I am saying it is nitroglycerin. <laughs> <laughs> Given some to my mother and the chickens. Oh no, this is disaster. Those are the only chickens we have. What <laughs> about my mother? <laughs> that drink. 
Oh, it make your mama very frisky. What happened? Uh, she got out of bed, went to pick up her slippers, and blew the door off the wardrobe. <laughs> Quick, the chickens! <laughs> Stop throwing this corn so hard. It's still gone. Where? Inside the chickens. What? Well, where are the chickens? Where they always go to Lazy X behind the edge. <laughs> well, that was only five. Where's the other? The cockerel chased her into the hen house. <laughs> So bang. <laughs> you are looking at a walking legend. <laughs> Look at it how you will. This is a very serious situation. Colonel, surely you know somebody who could order our release? There is only one person who could order our release. Who? Oh. Me. <laughs> René, huh? if they shoot us, at least I will die by your side. If you died in front of me, I'd have a better chance. <laughs> René, you do love me, don't you? Of course I love you, Yvette, of course. Oh, oh René, oh. what do you think it will be like in heaven? Well, I don't suppose they let us do this for a start. <laughs> If only the French would have boys and girls in the same cell. <laughs> oh. Helga, how did you get up there? I am standing on a peasant. <laughs> have you come to get us out? No, but I have your uniforms back from the cleaners. Where are they? In the office, ready for you when you get out. But how do we get out? Here is a hacksaw for the boss. Ah, thank you. Even without bars, I can't get through this little window. I could. Yes, but you can't sign the orders. You're not senior enough. I could forge your signature. I've done it before. <laughs> now it's all coming out. <laughs> General von... Stand still! <laughs> General von Klinkhofen is arriving by car. He's most displeased. Somebody's blown up the railway. It was him. <laughs> Tell tale. I must go. Somebody's coming. Ah! Oh, <laughs> wrong. There's you are no doubt all going to be shot. You will no doubt wish to see a priest. Come this way. <laughs> He took a nana <laughs> and when the horse were fighting down, he was anglacing. Shh! It is I, Leclerc. Well, I never would have guessed. <laughs> what do you want? I bring you good news. Shh! Your mother-in-law and your wife are coming to see you. This is good news? <laughs> also, I have for you, uh, concealed on my person. <laughs> an axe. We already have an axe, you silly old fool. <laughs> In that case, my son, up yours. <laughs> I have given them my blessing. Let me out. Bless you. And you. <laughs> Oh, another. <laughs> you have more visitors. <laughs> Why are you putting me in here with these smelly peasants? <laughs> to say goodbye to your son in law. Goodbye, let us get out. <laughs> Not now, Edith. Yes. We have a plan. Good. What is it? 
<laughs> we are up to here with hacksaws. I am down to there with hacksaws. <laughs> All prepared? Everything is going according to plan. Very nearly. <laughs> Don't waste time. I have to leave. Oh, it is cold. <laughs> Why have you brought me here? The angels are going to take my husband away. Mm. The last time it was the belief. <laughs> <laughs> This is a very sad occasion for me, René. Yes, I feel the same way, Lieutenant. <laughs> oh, you French. You are so brave. Your mother-in-law has not shed one single tear. <laughs> this I believe. <laughs> so what about my wife? She is like a rock. She says she is going to sing the Marseillaise. <laughs> you wish a blindfold? Earplugs would be better. <laughs> May I shake your hand? Of course. You'll find it round the back. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get on with this, please? Oh, I nearly forgot. <sighs> so they have something to aim at. <laughs> you Germans, such sticklers for accuracy. <laughs> Now? No. I will give you the signal. Is that it? <laughs> no. I am composing myself. Frontrack! Men! Present your rifles! <laughs> now. One. Two, three, four. The Rashi children are the Nazis. We are destroying our The kids are too many. Our <laughs> blood shall not be shed in. Why have we stopped? <laughs> it is over. Good. Let that be a lesson to you. The relatives may remove the body. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Let me escort me to my car. Do you think he is all right? If he is, it'll be tricks on the house. If not, we found another cafe. <laughs> My poor brave really. It is. He's still alive. He's trying to speak. He really. Are you in pain? Keep quiet. This may be his last breath words. Listen carefully. I shall say this only once. <laughs> My bum is on a thistle. <laughs> uh, Edith, um, when Monsieur Alphonse has finished his cognac, uh, show him the body in the office. But René... Uh, René's body, that's right. <laughs> yes. uh, Monsieur Alphonse, I am sure you will forgive me if I do not come with you. It is very difficult for me, you understand. Of course, of course, monsieur. Quite 
quiet speech of my husband. <laughs> I hope so. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Poor Sabadit. Of flour on his face. Uh, when he was arrested, he was making a roly poly pudding. <laughs> Just think, we will never see his roly poly again. Before I go, I will need the signature of the brother-in-law. <laughs> Where do you think he is at the moment? Oh, I do not know, but uh, I am sure he will join us in the bar as soon as he can. <laughs> My tape measure. Um. <laughs> we'll, we'll get, get it for you. you. <laughs> it's only an handful of my friends here. I thought you said the old village of Nuvion was turning out to mourn my passing. Nuvion Rangers are playing away. <laughs> Remy, hold on to my arm. Are you going to faint? No, I cannot see. <laughs> Bernie, do you think the resistance will be very cross with us because we are burying the anti-tank mines in a coffin? That is their funeral. This is mine. Do <laughs> you think we should goose step? No, Hans. That would be very poor taste. It's bad enough we have with us. The man who shot me. I was obeying orders. I was most upset. As I uttered the word, fire, I felt a complete rotter. <laughs> This will do. They cannot see us here. You will bend over and touch your toes. Keep you in mind, Hefley. I wish to steady my binoculars. Wrong. Hurry up. Who has the key? 
He plays and giraffe for the new young rangers. <laughs> we have had it. What is the problem? <gasps> the, the priest has forgotten the key. Shall I shoot off the lock? If it wasn't for you and your shooting, we wouldn't be here in the first place. <laughs> Can you all come back tomorrow? <laughs> I won't keep until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Something very strange is happening. What is that, Herr Flick? The coffin and all the mourners are heading in this direction. <laughs> another position? No. We are quite safe here. Very amusing. <laughs> that was not so amusing. You will be pleased to hear I've managed to get my lighter out of my back pocket. <laughs> but you were trying to give up smoking. <laughs> I am going to burn through the ropes that tie your wrists, and then you can untie me. Oh, good. I saw this in a film with Conrad Veidt. <laughs> Put your voice down and stand by. I am ready. <laughs> what is the delay? I'm pulling up my wick to get a big flame. <laughs> <laughs> Even Conrad Veidt didn't think of that. <laughs> Here we go. You are lighting the hairs on my wrist. <laughs> Don't be a baby. I'm not a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Hans. I felt the hope go. That was the strap of my wristwatch. There's <laughs> someone coming. Try not to smolder. <laughs> what is happening? Where am I? We moved the blindfold. <coughs> Rene. What are you doing here? Well, I was just putting out the cat, and I was pounced on by the resistance. <laughs> Perhaps they think I am somebody else. You are the brother of the man who was shot. You are to have the honor of shooting these men who have raped the whole of France. Uh, if I may say so, that is a slight exaggeration. <laughs> here is a gun. Now is your chance to avenge your brother. Oh, well, I, I think you should understand that my brother and I were not that close. In fact, we did not get on. No, no, he used to bully me, you know. He used to twist the ear of my teddy bear and, <laughs> and, and pinch my conkers. <laughs> I know, I know it does not sound like much now, but when you are little, you remember such things. I have placed in the chamber two bullets. Do your duty. Oh. May I have just one last request? We are supposed to have the last request. <laughs> Silence, pig, dog! Hyena. Hyena! <laughs> uh, I would like to savor my moment of revenge alone. We understand. <laughs> Quick, follow me. Oh, that was a narrow squeak. Rene, you must get us out of here. We cannot go on helping you if we are shot. It is all your fault for saying I was my own twin brother. 
if you had said I was a, a, a distant cousin or something, I would not be in this mess. <laughs> You're in a mess. What about the mess we're in? What am I going to do? Cut these ropes and we can leg it out the window. <laughs> ah. uh, wait, a, wait a moment. Uh, uh, how do I explain that you have escaped? Will you leg it as well? <laughs> You have not shot them yet. Uh, yeah, no, no. Uh, well, I thought I would just torture them a bit, you know. <laughs> you know how one does. J just in case they can reveal any of Hitler's plans or, 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 or secret weapons or, or where he is going on his holidays. <laughs> My unit has just intercepted a parachute drop. We are very puzzled to know what this means. There are two German uniforms and two identical paintings. How strange. More than strange. The names of these two officers are on the uniforms, and they were dropped by the RAF. That is because we are British officers in disguise. Isn't that so, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, Henry Oldbean. <laughs> <laughs> You think it is a very long way? They go us in circles, so who knows? But I feel this is the correct road. Good sense of direction. If only we had a compass, we could check our bearings. Look out for the Greek bear. <laughs> there are many clouds and few stars. You fool, Hans! Not up there! It's an inn outside Nouveau. You never mentioned it before. I don't tell you everything. Listen, there's a car coming. I will halt it. <laughs> uh, Herr Flick, you would be pleased to see the captain and I have escaped. That is quite evident. We have good news. We have found at last the missing painting of the fallen Madonna with the big boobies. <laughs> Hans, give the painting to Herr Flick. The Fuhrer will be delighted. Good. I will take it at once to a place of safety. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Have a little patience, will you? You are waking up the old house. <laughs> For the sake of heaven. Now then, where is the key? Just a minute. What is happening? We were both aroused by the banging. <laughs> I was aroused when I saw the girls with the candle. <laughs> yes, all right. Who is it? <laughs> Colonel, Colonel, you are safe. Oh, oh. What a night. What a night. <laughs> the news is good. We have handed the forgery to Herr Flick to send to the Fuhrer, and we have the original painting for you to hide behind the bricks in your cellar. And then we can all sleep soundly in our beds oh. once more. Oh. Give it to me quickly, in case you have been followed. Now then. Ah. Ah, the Fallen fall Madonna with the big boobies. Yes. <laughs> oh, the trouble you have given us all. Uh. Well, take a good look, my friends. You will not see them again until after the war is over. <laughs> What is written on that little label in the corner? I don't know. It is in English. I don't understand. I speak a little English. I will try to translate for you. Oh. <clears throat> Dear Resistance, please note this is the forgery. <laughs> You're cross, aren't you? <laughs> well, what do we do now? We must get the painting back before Herr Flick can send it to the Fuhrer. And who is going to do that? You are. <laughs> and if you don't, I you will, will have, have you me shot. shot. Yeah. <laughs> Let everyone to bed. 
Uh, life is back to normal. Helga, go at once to Herr Flick and let him wring the information out of you. Yes, Colonel. <laughs> Cheeses! Cheeses! Ah, ah, I see a typical cheese salesman entering my cafe. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. Thank you. Me yes. and yes. cheeses, Shut you up. will buy. Shut up. My cheeses. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, cheese seller. I am prepared to purchase all your wares. Oh. Oh, how very fortunate. <laughs> uh, uh, never before have I had such a good day for yes. selling yes. the cheeses. Good. <laughs> good. That means you can go home without delay. <laughs> it is I, Leclerc. Well, I never. <laughs> the radio is already connected. And the spare battery is in the Dutchy Dam with the knobs on. <laughs> the face of that cheese seller seems strangely familiar. Ah, yeah, well, yeah, well it is a very small village and uh, we do a lot of interbreeding. <laughs> I believe you have a luxury for me. Huh? Oh, yes. Yes, a little packet of your favorite cigars. Yes, I put Excuse me. So much trouble, it is most touching. Thank you. <laughs> I, I do not know this tune. <laughs> I do not know it all that well myself. Cheers. I beg your pardon. The air is enjoying his new bicycle. I am glad to hear this. <laughs> Who is Pierre? Oh, he's, he's just a young lad in the village. You know? Did you give him the bicycle? No, no. <laughs> Why are you telling me he is enjoying it? Well, uh, there is so little to enjoy these days. Uh, I was just making conversation. <laughs> Philip and Jean are going for a swim. <laughs> oh, indeed. Are they friends of Pierre? <laughs> Well, I, I expect so. It, it's a very small place and there is only one river. Eloise is expecting a visit from the store. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> who, who, who is responsible? I expect it is Pierre. <laughs> he has the bicycle. Listen carefully. I will meet you behind the woodshed. <laughs> See you later, then. <laughs> you shut up. Love's always been my game, play it how I may. I was made that way. <laughs> Men cluster to me like moths on the flame. <laughs> and no, I'm not to blame. Lieutenant Gruber, he's very handsome. <laughs> Not you, too. <laughs> I should be a lot happier when Helga and Herr Flick are here. Otherwise, René could find himself in quite a lot of trouble. Never mind, Hans. We have an alibi. We are here. Fanny! I brought you a onion soup. Oh, oh, no, no, no. What are you... What are you doing? 
It is Sun Rene are away on a secret mission huh? and they may never return. I am obeying my daughter's last request. Huh. Uh, what is this? Keep an eye on the till. <laughs> <laughs> I could keep the eye on the till. <laughs> Yes, you will also have your hand in the till. What am I to do? I can't help it. <laughs> and now, fellow officers of the victorious German army, in accordance with our ancient Bavarian tradition, I give you for your entertainment, Gunilla, Erika, Hilda, Inga, Yvette and Maria, the Hitler Youth! Girls make very good boys, do they not? Yes, indeed. One could easily be fooled. <laughs> do not let the fact that I am a senior member of the Gestapo and did not receive an invitation to your gathering stop you from having a jolly time. Have we your permission to carry on, Herr Flick? Of course. Albert, music! having the drinks. Help yourself, Herr Flick. It's all free. This is good. 